Hello and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. I'm Serge. Joining me today, I have a Jer. Hello. And a Wheeler. Wabbledy dabbledy. Wabbledy dabbledy. Indeed. That's actually the slogan of our new Patreon. Oh, good segue. Patreon.com slash loading ready run. You make all of this possible. All the wabbledy dabbledies are thanks to you. Ah, welcome to part three of our Strixhaven set review. Reminder, these are Canadian Highlander set reviews. They are not exhaustive. We don't talk about every card. And the cards we do talk about are analyzed through the lens of Canadian Highlander specifically. Normally, we'd also include the commander cards, but it turns out there aren't any gold commander cards we want to talk about, which is shocking. But we also have like 40 gold cards to get through because there's a lot of very cool ones so i guess that also makes sense you know trying to limit it down all right without further ado i guess let's just get right into this and start with belladross wither bloom this is a seven mana legendary elder dragon for five a black and a green gets you a flying four four with the ability at the beginning of each upkeep create a one one black and green pest creature token and pay 10 life untap all lands you control activate only once what do you think wheeler verdant force looks a little different uh, nowadays but that's okay i mostly ignore the first two lines of text on this card i just like that you can pay seven life and untap all your lands 10 10 life Sorry, I was thinking I got Gristlebrand on the mind because I'm probably <laughs> playing this in a deck with Gristlebrand, actually, like a Tin Fins-ish variant or viewers, or listeners rather of the podcast might be familiar with a, an old standby of Yogmoth's Jacuzzi, like a fast bond based storm deck that uses reanimation stuff. The fact that it says once t- each turn, but if this card changes zones by merit of like burnt offering or sacrifice and then gets reanimated again, that sounds pretty cool and good to me. Yeah, I, I don't know know how into actual fair reanimation with this card i am because i mean it's got it's only got four power and four toughness but yeah i i I foresee this card will only just exist to do broken things to provide redundancy of course for the record as soon as you started talking about fair i started shaking my head really (laughs) i mean you could i guess ramping like natural order in this card is also gross or just casting i I guess that implies natural order is fair just a four four though yeah i don't know jared do you foresee this card in a fair no no, I was like shake, not nodding my head. I was shaking my head as in like I, w- I wasn't down. Oh, mm. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no. <laughs> I am going to pay 10 life and then put myself at a life total where I can pay 10 life again and then uh, kill them. All right, next up, we have Blood Researcher. This is a three mana, two, two for one, a black and a green. Vampire Druid with Menace. And whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Blood Researcher. It has the Ajani's Pride Mate ability. One of the things about Ajani's Pride Mate is if it's an eight, eight, it still just gets blocked by one spirit token or whatever so they at least need two spirit tokens for this it is a little (laughs) bit more expensive but it's still within the colors of you know that want redundancy for this kind of card and menace means that if you play this and then let's say you're not gaining a massive amount of life next turn you're still going to at least be able to clock in without having to worry too much and then also it just fits into like if anytime a creature has menace like the fact that you can attack with this and then there's always the risk of them double blocking because you're in a black deck you can just kill one of their things you're in green you could pump it you know it's just always tricky adding an extra layer of having you know you'll probably have some other cards that could just gain life at instant speed that added layer of oops haha my thing's too big now is uh pretty good Next up, we have Blot Out the Sky. X white black sorcery. Create X tapped two on white and black flying inkling tokens. And then if X is six or more, destroy all non-creature, non-land permanents. What do you think, Jer? The card's definitely interesting. I just don't really see a great spot for it. It's not often that a sort of big mana deck gets to cast spells like these and and have the tokens come in tapped without sort of dying. The destroy all non-creature, non-land permanents clause is pretty interesting. It means... If you're playing against like an artifact based deck, you might be able to sort of attack on two angles and get a really fast clock in play and dis- disrupt their game plan pretty substantially. But overall, eight, eight mana is a lot to commit to. So I don't know how, how reliable that plan is going to be in two ones. There's a lot of sweepers in the format and they get swept by literally every sweeper that exists. So I, I, I'm just not sure there's a spot for this. No, absolutely. Pretty clunky for a mythic, expensive mythic at that. Speaking of us, expensive mythics, Body of Research is a six mana sorcery for green 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 blue 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 that's six pips it has a picture of a pig in the art create a zero zero fractal token put x plus one plus one counters on it where x is the number of cards in your library jer this card just doesn't do anything 
It makes a very large pig. Mm, yeah. It's the best part about this card. Yeah, it's, the best part is the art. Like just having a big creature in this format isn't isn't good enough. Decks are decks are built to be able to to beat that. If it had trample, then we could talk. If it had an activated ability where it could fling itself, then we could talk. But like the, this card by itself isn't going to win you the game. And there are better ways to spend six mana. I think. Big All right. Pig. Well, what maybe maybe this one's better. <laughs> it's like setting Jer up to be underwhelmed by cards. Closing statement is a five mana instant for three a white and a black but it costs two less to cast during your end step destroy target creature or planeswalker you don't control and then put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature you do control what do you think of this the cost reduction is nice but it's the timing is a little little unfortunate like decks looking to play at instant speed don't really want to do it during their own end step they're like haha now my shields are down for your entire <laughs> turn <laughs> ah i got you good yeah putting being able to hit a planeswalker and putting a counter on a creature you control is is kind of nice if you're a more proactive deck i could see i could see playing this as an unconditional removal spell yet again the the timing's a little awkward you're like i get to kill your planeswalker but my creature will be bigger on my next turn it's like yeah sort of a little awkward but i i could see playing it in a in a more proactive deck all right well all right the last the last three maybe not great how about the holy ritual four mana sorcery two a black and a green destroy each non-land permanent with mana value two or less then add black or green for each permanent destroyed this way this one's got to be sweet right this one's just really really niche i think if you're playing a bunch of other sweepers in your deck this one can be can be okay but you're never gonna play this as your your sort of only sweeper it's really good against really low to the ground decks as well as uh artifact and enchantment based decks it's often gonna be mana mana neutral or very very cost effective and very card advantageous but there's definitely going to be a bunch of matchups where it's it's basically dead or it's a really expensive one for one so yeah this card's kind of interesting i think i think it might be worth playing if you have a good read on your meta and you you have a pretty good idea that it's going to be live most of the time or you're playing a deck with a lot of a lot of card selection and you're able to to filter into the cards you need so i think this card's like a, a niche card but an interesting option to have available next up we have deadly brew so black green sorcery each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. If you sacrificed a permanent this way, you may return another permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. What do you think, Jer? I actually think this card is pretty interesting in the right deck. Like, there's a lot of decks that can... It's one of those symmetrical cards that isn't really symmetrical. It's it's a fairly inexpensive edict, and although edicts generally aren't great in our format, the ones that do see play have some other utility attached to them, and this one does. Often, the decks that want to play this will... Sacrificing a creature will be sort of negligible or even advantageous and it being a regrowth as well makes it makes it really advantageous so i, I actually think this card is going to be going to be quite good and i'm i'm excited to to try this in a few different different decks i like that we went from like mythic mythic all right ignore the uncommon rare and then the card you're most excited about is the two mana edict <laughs> well it's it's just so many effects on on one card it, it tags mm. planeswalkers which is really important it means it's going to be live a lot more often you can get any permanent back from your graveyard to your hand so even if you need to get a fetch land back or something you can you can snag a, a land back to make sure you hit your land drop you can get like key permanents that your opponent destroyed back like often these cards are very limited they often say like creature or land each opponent sacrifices just a creature so they they really push this card to include a lot of a lot of utility and and for that reason i think it might see play in a format like ours that is singleton and is looking for cards that offer a lot of utility all right next up we have decisive denial this is a two meta instant for a green and a blue oh no it's a simic uncommon all right let's keep going <laughs> Choose one. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Or counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays three. Wheeler. Big fan of this card uh, for blue green specifically. I don't think uh you might I might play this outside of strictly blue green tempo or the blue green mid-range. But like the fact that you that deck doesn't have I mean now it has a good amount of fight spells, I guess, but still a fight spell that's just a fight spell is uh just a fight spell. So having the added like negate like i wouldn't call this a spell pierce mana leak is usually just a hard counter anyways having the added like no don't kill my thing or yes my thing will kill your thing is pretty great i, I like this card a lot and i look forward to casting it with a tarmogoy from play oh yeah next up we have dina the soul steeper apparently she really likes tea this is a two mana legendary dryad druid one three for a black and a green whenever you gain a life each opponent loses a life activated ability 
only one and sack another creature, Dina gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the sacrifice creature's power. Wheeler, what do you think? Dina and I get along really well. You know, three toughness, two, it's a legendary creature that costs two or less, one power, it triggers off of gaining life, likes T, sacrifices things to berserk. I mean, what's not to love? It's a dryad druid. This card's great. I mean, some of those reasons are more important than the others. It's a cheap to cast legendary creature that is relatively easy to tutor up by merit of its power for, say, Recruiter of the Guard, or not Recruiter of the Guard for this one, Imperial Recruiter. It's a green creature, so Green Sun Zenith is pretty easy for that, Court of Calling, you know, all that jazz. Its ability triggers off of, I think a lot of people look at that and then just kind of process it the same way as a Johnny's Pride Mate does, but also like, you know, Blood Artist's, also have that ability tacked on. And then she could just randomly kill people. Like she does act as a sack outlet, albeit it costs mana to use her. But like in the past for Sandy B, like Pattern Rector, I, I, I have enjoyed Idly from, God, what is she from? Oath of the Gatewatch. She's like a white black 2-3 legend with death touch. She has a sack outlet where you pay one, sack another creature, and you gain life equal to the sack creature's toughness. She has another ability that exiles things, but you have to have a whole bunch of life. The point is, it's just another sack outlet that has some relative utility attached to it. She actually just kills people. I definitely can see myself playing her in the, the version of Sandy B that is kind of like leaning into like Renegade Rallyer, Safi shenanigans, not just strictly the Academy Rector stuff. But does like, does Dina... Does that deck need Dina? Because if you're already going infinite with your loops, like I, I, I almost picture this better in a life gain deck, just as incidental sort of stuff, as opposed to a combo piece. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely playing her in the life gain deck. But I, I only mention that because she checks off, again, all these boxes, where if you're missing any number of these pieces, she can end up filling those roles to a certain extent. Right, You need that first sack outlet, she's that sack outlet. You need that thing that's going to kill them if you have a soul warden in play. When you're like infinite ET being, you've got Dina. If you just want to sack, like if you just want to go for the the fair air quotes game plan of turning her Kasali pride mage and like some other Dorcas's to the side, like they have to deal with her or she's going to kill you if you have enough mana. So yeah, big fan. And she also goes infinite with, I guess, exquisite blood, which you could find off Academy Rector, which now I'm thinking is kind of cute. <laughs> okay cool 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 yeah i like her a lot next up we have double major two mana instant for green and blue copy target creature spell you control except it isn't legendary if that spell is legendary what do you think jer i think this card's just a little too finicky if it had the templating of like the next creature spell you you control gets copied i think that would be better but the fact that you get two for one by a counter spell here is is a pretty pretty large downside and i just don't think there's a deck that wants this effect badly enough that wouldn't just rather play like the clone effects that are a lot safer yeah i yeah there's not i didn't really think about that i was like oh instant speed clone but you're like you're absolutely correct this is not an instant speed clone it's got it's way more vulnerable and restrictive than that yeah the fact that the clones can clone anything you already have in play and this can only clone things you have in your hand the things you often hang on to are are your more expensive creatures so then it's just like you're basically only going to get to clone a creature you draw off the top of your deck so it's you can't even do it in response to them either because it's restricted to, to a creature you control right exactly yeah I, I just think this card's a little too restrictive and it and i imagine that with the the format changes they will print one eventually where it says the next creature spell you cast gets copied They've started doing that with instant or sorcery spells more, so you don't get blown out by a by a counter spell. And when they do that, that'll that'll pique my interest a little bit more. <laughs> All right. Next up, Elemental Expressionist is a four mana four for Orc Wizard for blue red hybrid four times. Is that the easiest way to express that? Quad is it hybrid? Quad is oh, quad is it hybrid? I Pris like that. What is Prismari. Prismari quad Prismari hybrid? Yeah. The 4-4 four four has Magecraft. When you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, choose target creature you control. Until end of turn, it gains. If this creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. And then, when you exile this creature, create a 4-4 four four blue and red elemental creature token. Jared, what do you think? I actually think this card's pretty interesting. It's a, it's a pretty big body. If you're a blue-red deck, it's very easy to cast. So you're likely to be able to tap out it can you can block with it if you need to but it, but it's it's relatively safe like it's four mana 
so it dodges a lot of the the three mana or less removal it's four toughness so it dodges most of the red removal and if you get to untap with it and have some other creatures and like i just want to play this with young pyromancer and turn all my pyromancer mm. tokens into into four fours that's 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 the dream i'm currently living but it's it's probably a little too clunky like it doesn't have a really good home like you're not going to play this in blue moon there's not like a big blue red aggressive style of deck jer what if what if i pointed towards master of waves oh you want to play it in devotion i want to i want to play this in uh the mono blue mid-rangey devotion deck like we've come a long way from yeah. crag puka <laughs> Hey, don't don't you hate on Craig. Oh, I, hey, I've got a, I've got a foil signed German copy that has been played more times than it should have. But like You've played it once. I played <laughs> I, for the sake of not embarrassing myself further. Yes, <laughs> just once. Yeah, but yeah, that that's a good spot for it. I was struggling to like. I was like, this card is cool. I just don't know where I'd play it. But yeah, that that's a good spot to play not, it. Not not to mention that that deck has experimented with like previously you could splash like black like early this was a little earlier where the points made it a bit more enticing but splashing black for like demonic tutor was a thing you can get away with if you didn't want to be on a recall spread or a time walk spread and i it has splashed red for moons off the back of like well i'm playing a bajillion basic islands yeah it's pretty free yeah 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 that's that's actually really cool all right, next up, we have Eureka Moment. It is a four-mana instant for two, a green, and a blue. Draw two cards. You may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. What do you think, Jer? I really like this card. It's a slam dunk and scape shift. It goes really well in like any flash, flash style of deck where you just want to play as much on instant speed as you can. Yeah, I really like it. It's pretty simple, but does everything a bunch of those types of decks want to do. This card's obviously pretty good. I was just wondering if at four mana it's too expensive. Not for the decks that that wanted. I don't think like in the flash style of decks, you're playing a ton of cantrips, so you're pretty good at hitting lands and you don't always want to commit more creatures to the board. So it's important to have a pretty high density of things to do. Four, four to six is pretty huge. Yeah, going going four to six is big. And in, in scape shift, that this is your turn, turn three. It's a great turn three to have the ability to hold up a counter spell or play a draw spell slash ramp spell that's like the dream so yeah if it's if it's perfectly into the the like less all-in scape shift builds like the ones that are playing more counter spells and more interaction and i i could see playing it in some flash decks as well all right next up expressive iteration this is a two mana sorcery for a blue and a red look at the top three cards of your library put one into your hand one on the bottom of your library and exile one you may play the exiled card this turn jare this is my favorite card in the set. Yeah, they printed a two mana draw two. <laughs> like, oh, it's pretty good. You play this on turn three. If you hit a land, you exile the land, play the land, and then you get the other card to your hand. In late game, it's insane. This card's really good. It's the best, maybe the best two mana draw spell they've ever printed. I'm trying to think if there's a better one. Maybe that's that's incorrect. I don't know. Chart of course is pretty cool. I was gonna say chart of course. Yeah. To me, this is better than Charter Course. But. Yeah, I agree. But <laughs> I mean, it's unique in its application, right? Like, I think it even beyond just being a good draw two, like get two cards off of it, like the selection aspect is also huge. Like Knight's Whisper sees vintage play to this day yeah. because there's not a lot of good options for just pay that, draw that, you know? And this is a bit harder on the mana cost for pips, but also... I think you're okay playing blue and red decks that want these cards. I was going to say, you, you'd just rather play blue and red than black cards anyway. So. You'll probably survive. I think you'll be okay. I would not have had this ranked that high in our set review. Fascinating. Cool. That, I, that's just This card's busted. It, it's not a sexy card. I mean, it is, depending on you. Uh, it kind of is, actually. <laughs> like, it's not making your entire library into a giant pig, but... <laughs> You'll probably win more games off this card than that, yeah. Poor body of research. <laughs> all right, all right, let's move on. Next up, Extus, Auric Overlord. This is a four mana two for legendary human warlock for one, a white, a black, and a black. Has double strike and a magecraft ability of whenever you cast a, or copy an instant or source, return target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This is also a double-faced modal card, though. On the opposite side, eight 
Mana Sorcery, Awaken the Blood Avatar. You can't see me, but I'm throwing up the horns right now. Six black red. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sack any number of creatures, and this spell costs two less for each sacked that way. Each opponent sacks a creature. Create a 3-6 black and red avatar token with haste. That reads, whenever this creature attacks, it deals three damage to each opponent. Wheeler, what do you think of this mess? This is the coolest card that has been printed in God knows how long. Absolutely. Like, it is the most metal by far. Yeah. Like, all of this is sick. And as per the last set review episode, I will do heinous things to get free raised deads. So... I don't know. I want to shelve. I want to put this in the category of like, oh, I'll play it. All right. And I will ignore every person telling me I shouldn't be playing this or that there are better options. So real quick, where does it go? Because it seems expensive for uh, uh, looking at the regrow ability and double craft, double craft, double strike, magecraft. I would picture it in like a white, black and Orzov mid range or aggressive deck. But is that even good there at four? That's the thing is that like you can only have so many four drops in like an Orzov deck or a Mardu deck. And like, is this what I like? It's what I want to do with my mana. Is it <laughs> something I should be doing? Probably not. Like it's a four mana legend that gets Caracas. It's got double strike for some reason. I like it in, in the mid range deck. Give yeah. it, a, it wants to carry equipment, but it's also fighting in that slot with, you know, Gideon. I've got to imagine this is just this is just like the perfect commander card and nothing else. Like this card was designed. <sighs> yeah, the opposite side for sure. Yeah, like again, I wouldn't be if I die to this, I will be so hyped. Yeah. Like and if Agreed. I kill someone with it, I will feel great about it. And like in the right <laughs> deck, the backside isn't totally off the table right games go long you might be playing an aristocrats deck you might want a demon three <laughs> six demon is kind of hilarious i guess it's an avatar but it's kind of hilarious it, it hits for six technically if it connects but yeah it, it does it's just very like okay <laughs> who got into the computer to design this it was clearly not on the record but <laughs> yeah, all right i don't know cool card Next up, Fracture is a two-mana instant for white and a black. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or planeswalker. Jer? I actually think now they've started printing enough naturalizes with with better alternate modes than destroy a planeswalker. Like they've started printing like ones that cycle, ones that remove cards from graveyard. And I think those are just more usable, so they're more more playable than this one. I really like that they added or planeswalker. But I just think the options that we have available are are more likely to see play. Like there are a bunch of times where this card is just going to sit in your hand and you, you just can't really afford to play play too many of those. And I don't think the upside on this one is enough to to put it into your deck most of the time. Like if you if you want really want to play a naturalize in a black white deck, this is a reasonable one to pick. But I, I still think there are there are better options. Yeah. And white and black, you just have so many removal spells. Yeah. Good. But outclassed is your rating. Definitely, yeah. All right. Next up, Galazeth Prismari is a four mana three four legendary elder dragon for two, a blue and a red. Has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Then there's one other line of text. I guess it might be good. Artifacts you control have tap. Add one mana of any color. Spend only to cast instant or sorcery abilities. Huh. <laughs> What do you think, Wheeler? My favorite part of this card is that it's a 3-4 flyer. Like, that it's a big dragon. I guess making a treasure token is also cool, because you keep a bolt or spell pierce off of it. This, it, I, you could kind of file this under the camp of that red card that we talked about, Storm Kill Artist, I believe it's its name. It has a magecraft ability that creates treasure tokens when you cast instants or sorceries or copy yeah. them. So maybe if you're in a strictly blue-red every wheel of fortune you can think of combo deck like a paradox build of that then sure like you you would be like an artifact combo deck that's less reliant on singular artifacts like less like oh no my paradox engine now i ramp into nothing but like why do i need this you know like, do I really need this? A lot of my artifacts already add mana. And I guess it lets the titular Paradox Engine and such add mana. But again, they don't need help. Mm. So I like this because it doesn't die to Bolt and attacks for three. But I, I just think I would rather play Lightning Angel 
which is another color, but I don't know. It's a four drop that I would just, that fills a slot I would rather do other things with. I'd rather just play Gold Span Dragon, actually. That's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that one's really good. <laughs> well, I want to talk about good cards. We sorry, are. Jeez. sorry. <laughs> All right, next up, we have Harness Infinity, which is a seven mana instant for one black, 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 green, green, green. And it says, exchange your hand and graveyard, exile Harness Infinity. I... What does this card do, Wheeler? I mean, I, I obviously reading the card explains the card, but what does it do do? I mean, it, maybe you just solved it by saying do do. Like, I, <laughs> I, this is one of these cards where it's either going to pop up in a deck that wants it as this like instant speed draw 20, or it's just why am I doing this? Like, it's appealing to have this, like, oh, I cast this, and then I get all my cards back, and I don't know Yawgmoth's will or ill-gotten gains exists. But, <laughs> like, like when I saw this and I processed it, I was like, you know, I the, the most common scenario that I could potentially foresee this seeing play is, like, with, like, a wilderness reclamation. I'm shaking my head for the record. <laughs> I, I'm definitely going to play this card in Salt Iraq. Yeah, I don't think it's good or correct, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. That's that's exactly what I thought was. This is going to be a card that is going to get played in a deck with Wilderness Reclamation. And if it's really bad, you're going to potentially keep playing it like it's a kind of card where if I played it and it was absolute garbage for two weeks in a row, I will still play it for that third week. I'll give too many free shots for it. Like, no, this, this has got to be good, right? It regrows everything. Yeah, and if it works out, like, once, I will not <laughs> shut up about it for months. <laughs> but you'll take it out of your deck. Yeah, I'll take it out and be like, oh, it's really good. Prove super good. Point. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll come back to it, though. You know, I'm going to try out new things. <laughs> yeah. It's seven it's mana. It's so big. Like, maybe <laughs> there is, like, some merit to maybe you mill out. Oh, no, that sucks. Yeah, it's just so <laughs> big. It's just so big. It's, it's only saving grace is that it's an instant. Yes. Oh, absolutely. This is oh, the yeah. kind of card where if somebody, if I was sitting down and running interviews and people are pitching combo decks to me, somebody comes in and goes, imagine you put your entire deck into your graveyard. Okay. You have and I'm like, attention. okay, I'm listening. I'm like, what if you killed them with this? And I just like look <laughs> at the camera or just blankly look out the window. It's like, yeah. Oh, cool. You found a way to kill your opponent when you have your entire deck in your graveyard. So here's the line. Here's the line. Borboringless Enraged is in play. <sighs> yeah. You mill your entire deck. You uh -huh. put them all in your hand, and then you discard all your lands to kill them, Wheeler. It's oh, so simple. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wowee. <laughs> right, this on. is worse than what I said. Oh, if you attack with Gristlebrand, you can gain <laughs> seven life to use this other card. All right. Hoffrey Ghostforge is a five mana legendary dwarf cleric for three, a red and a white, has a four or five body. Spirits you control get plus one plus one, have trample and haste. And whenever a non token creature you control dies, exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types and has, when this creature leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to your graveyard. What do you think, Wheeler? <laughs> like. <laughs> This is one of those cards where I'm going to start by saying it's a five mana mythic, right? It's a five mana creature and it's a legendary creature. It doesn't have an ETB and Krakus exists. Okay. <laughs> That's where the downsides end. But yes. now that we got that out of the way, why, <laughs> why are there so many words on this? There's, it's like a short story. Why does it have to return them back to the graveyard? It's I love like... that. There's no downside. They're exiled and they come back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> what? It's so, it's just truly absurd. I think absurd is the best way to describe it. And like, they also, like, it took me reading and complaining about this card, not complaining angry, but complaining like baffled about this card to then also just be like, oh yeah, and these tokens have haste and, and trample, trample. Yeah. and they're bigger for yeah. some <laughs> reason. <laughs> like this is just i i'm so i'm so worried like what's the catch <laughs> like what's the catch see, i mean it's five mana it's a five mana four five is the catch i don't know this seems i i love 
red white i've i've played a lot of five drops that's not that big of a catch let me tell you <laughs> i think this is the perfect finisher because previously in these colors the best you had in this slot was jor kadim that's that's just not true Serge. <laughs> there's storm breath dragon there's there's thunder Ma Hellkite. No, that was the best you had in red white not not dragons we know dragons are good we know <laughs> dragons are good there's gideon jura specifically <laughs> Five mana red white legendary. <laughs> Why does it have to be both red and white? <laughs> for the flavor reason. Why did Boros always suck? Oh my. For someone who has a meme surrounding kitchen finks and color identity, you're really <laughs> focusing on it having to be red and white. It's the colors, man. Why did the color combination always suck? I mean, I. No, I hey, hey. I get you. I feel you. Mantis Rider, you know, there's blue in it, but really it's a Boros <laughs> card. Like. I, I, f I feel where you're coming from. I, I do understand that. Like, I will make decks and I'll be like, oh, I don't have enough of this color of creature in here. And it's like, but you don't need to. <laughs> but there's something in my head. It's like, that nah, it doesn't look right. I need a blue five drop. No, I need a blue five drop or I won't, or I won't be happy. But like, Jared's absolutely right. You could be playing any number of five mana dragons in the same slot, which is going to be hard to compete with. For Jor Kadeen, let's specify. <laughs> because this card, I, I, you know what? If if after a year, there's a, some like a trillionaire steps forward, secretly the richest person in the world. And they're like, every player that didn't play Hoffrey Ghost Forge passed this test. Oh, no. <laughs> you all receive $20 billion. Like, what is the catch? What are you doing, Wizards of the Coast? Like, where? what divine punishment will come down to all of us that, in like, I, something has to happen, right? <laughs> There's something going on. It it does go in Aristocrats. I do need to, if you're playing a five drop in your Aristocrats deck, oh. this this is it. Oh, I didn't notice that. Why do they go back to your hand? <laughs> no, no, and, and it's not a replacement effect. It, it's not exile it instead. It dies, then you exile it. It's, it's Academy Rector. And then when the token leaves play, they go back to your graveyard. Right? Yeah. Oh, that might actually just be better. <laughs> <laughs> it is it it's way better oh my god so yeah. stupid yeah okay all right let's move on <laughs> all right humiliate is a two mana sorcery for a white and a black that says target opponent reveals their hand you choose a non-land card in it that player discards it and you put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control jer this card is quite good if you are a proactive deck looking to play hand attack and you have a bunch of one drops in your deck you should play this like if you're like black white dnt abzan aggro abzan mid-range mardu that type of thing yeah play it hand attack them i got to play this with dread horde arcanist Ooh. oh that's the dream oh i mean there's i dread horde arcanist is good with a lot of things <laughs> that felt unfair yeah getting to this dread horde do it again and then vindicate on the next attack <laughs> <laughs> i target this land and then i attack oh. and then i target this land <laughs> all right Sorensen might be onto something with his mardu now all right. Next up, Kazmina Enigma Sage is a three mana planeswalker of the Kazmina variety. Very interesting. One, a green and a blue gets you two loyalty. It has the static ability. Each other planeswalker you control has loyalty abilities of Kazmina. Plus two, scry one. Minus X creates a fractal with X plus one plus one counters on it. And minus eight, search your library for an instant or sorcery card that shares a color with this planeswalker. Exile that card. Shuffle and you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Jared, what do you think? I think this card is quite good. The most obvious place for me is in the, the rug. Super Friends Time Walks deck. It's tailor-made for that deck. Otherwise, I think it's like a fine value card, especially if you can cast it on, on turn two fairly often. I think a common play pattern will be, if you're if you're not under too much pressure, will be plus twoing it twice and then making a 5-5. Five five. That's a, it's probably going to be pretty good. Yeah, I, I like this. That's a good amount. Also, her static ability is going to come up sometimes, and it's going to be it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, giving a plus two to some planeswalkers that typically don't get to accelerate that quickly seems kind of spooky. Finally, my Sark in the Mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could even be like uh, there's times you don't want to plus one Liliana the Veil. I don't know what this weird bug deck we're imagining where that <laughs> situation's there, but you know, you're like, wait, I get to plus two her. Amazing. But that's pretty niche. All right, let's move on. Next up, we have Killian, the Ink Duelist. This is a two mana, two, two legendary human warlock for a white and a black. Has lifelink, 
has Menace, and spells you cast that target a creature cost two generic less to cast. Wheeler, what do you think? I think this card's pretty all right. The fact that you can target both your own things and their things, pretty pretty cool and good. It is kind of funny that when you look at this card, the first thing I come to mind is like, oh, black and white, making your path to act, your swords to pla- Okay, your <laughs> fatal push, co- uh, your kicked blood chief's thirst. There we go. <laughs> and like even, but but even then, like if you play this in you know a three color deck as well, like you have an added suite of things. Like even just making eliminate cost one mana, it's pretty reasonable. And then assuming you just play this and you don't get to reduce the cost of your spells, uh, that's probably okay because you have a two two lifelink menace creature with a relevant creature type. Here's a question for you. It, it's not magecraft. It's not instants and sorceries. What about in the auras deck? Yeah, you could maybe play this in an auras deck. Sanctum Stompy, Splashing Black. There's some really powerful black enchantments. Yeah, it, and also having the keywords kind of helps towards that. Not to mention if you have spells that like protect your creatures you're suiting up, you know, God's willing kind of variants. It's a little difficult playing an aura and then also keeping up your protective spells. So that kind of helps on that end. Like this is just a strong card that has a relevant ability and will uh, probably find a home. We'll certainly find a home. All right, next up, Lore Hold Command is a five mana instant for three of red and a white. Choose two from four modes. Create a three, two red and white spirit creature token. Creatures you control get plus one, plus O, gain indestructible and haste until end of turn. Deals three damage to any target. Target player gains three life and or sacrifice a permanent and draw two cards. I'll throw this to myself. I like this card. It's very expensive, but I feel that it is powerful and flexible enough to almost be worth it. I think end step, make a creature, lightning helix something, or draw into something else are very, very strong. And the ability to just swing for the win at the end there, to push through that final bit of damage with the indestructible end haste, makes it a very flexible card and a worthy contender for a top end for a, uh, a Boros aggressive deck. Any thoughts from you two on it being too expensive or you're like, ah, all right. Yeah, I think this card might have some merits to it. Like often these commands are very expensive or more expensive than you'd expect, but have like, typically it's okay, right? Like Ojitai's command is one I think of that for a long time, I was like, why would I play this card? And then in application, it was like, oh, actually I enjoy all these things and I'm willing to pay the cost. Four is different from five, but also this card just kills people. Like this one's certainly more proactive than Ojitai's command. And uh, like, I'll give it a shot for sure. I think this enters that category of let's try it out. Let's try to kill people with it which will probably be successful. But at the end of the day, it might just turn into a, a gold span. Yeah, maybe you're just supposed to play another dragon. Yeah, uh, or a Jorkadeen, but probably yeah. a dragon. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? All right, next up, Lorehold Excavation is a two-mana enchantment for red and a white. At the beginning of your end step, mill a card. If a land card was milled this way, you gain one life. Otherwise, deal one damage to each opponent. And then there's an activated ability five and exile the creature card from your graveyard. Create a tapped three, two spirit token. I may have met, read this wrong the first time I looked at this. I kind of liked it, but now I'm thinking that it's really slow. Excruciatingly so. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> yeah. what I thought was different. Like you could play it in prison. It's kind of a hilarious prison win card. But... <laughs> I remember the first time I read this, I, I included this card because I wanted to talk about it. And then reading it out loud, I'm looking at it and suddenly thinking to myself, it's not Sulfuric Vortex, which I did. I did. Maybe there's an argument to be made about it being a one-sided Sulfuric Vortex, but it's not. And the ability to create spirits is also really slow. Sometimes we whiff. <laughs> i mean it's it's a like not to this is the classic like hey oh no that was okay sort of mentality but it's a really cool card oh yeah i like it it's close i mean that's why i thought it was cool at first pass yeah yeah i exactly no we don't we don't have to reach for this one it happens mm -hmm. <laughs> all right next up magma opus probably my favorite named card in the set is an eight mana instant for six a blue and a red Deal four damage divided as you choose amongst any number of targets. Tap two target permanents. Create a four, four blue and red elemental creature token and draw two cards. 
And there's an activated ability, Prismari Hybrid times two. Discard Magma Opus and create a treasure token. Jer, what do you think? I think this this card is really interesting. It's obviously really good if you get to cast it, but it costs eight mana, and that's not that reasonable of a thing to expect to get to do unless you're doing something else unfair. So I think we have to investigate the other unfair things we can do. And speaking of decks that are like ones we've been thinking about in the shower for a few years now is like the the spell reanimator deck, like the Mizzix's Mastery style of deck, Torrential Gear Hulk, those things of that ilk. And I think this set is like one of the one of the bigger pushes in terms of making that deck a deck a real thing. This is these all all three of these cards are obviously the ones that you can discard to make a treasure are obviously good because they ramp you from two to four, which is a good number to ramp to because that's how much Mizzix Mastery costs if you want to just just get one spell. But also you eventually want to get to eight mana and it puts it in the graveyard very easily. So yeah, I, th- I think this card is interesting and that'll be an interesting deck to explore, but you're probably not going to cast this fairly. And I, I thought about Omniscience shenanigans, but there's just better things you can do with Omniscience yeah. if, we're, if we're being real. <laughs> but it, it, the treasure token. Mm-hmm. Petals of Insight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Mortality Spear. This is a four mana instant for two, a black and a green. But the spell costs two less to cast if you gain life this turn. Destroy target non-land permanent. Jer. Yep. This one's it. Very good. Play it. Doesn't matter if you're gaining life regularly or not. Good regardless. Cool. Yeah, I think you're correct. All right. Let's move on to Prismari Command. This is a three mana instant for a single... Wait. For one, a blue, and a red. Choose two from four. Deal two damage to any target. Target player draws two, then discards two. Target player creates a treasure token and destroy target artifact. Jer. This card's pretty good. It doesn't necessarily have two really good modes all the time. Like the two the two most common are gonna be the the looting and the the shock. And it's not amazing for that, but the fact that you get to staple a shatter on is is really nice. That's one of the most valuable command lines of text and when you need it, you often need it pretty badly. Creating a treasure token will probably be the least used mode, but when you use it, it'll probably be pretty important. Selfishly, I really like that they've started templating these as target player loots because I really like playing like the the thief style of deck with Notion Thief and Oh Cold no, Reacher you're so and evil! Leavold, yes. And I just want to target my opponent with these and make them <laughs> discard two and I draw two. That's that's really all I all I want to do. It's all you live for. Jer wants one thing, and it's disgusting. <laughs> that's that's the kind of magic I enjoy. But yeah, I think this is a perfectly fine mode. It's an instant. It has a pretty reasonable mana cost. It's likely going to be able to to kill a relevant thing and do another good thing, and that's that's what what you want from your your three mana instant. Next up, we have Quandrix Command. Is another three mana instant for one, a green, and a blue. Choose two of four. Return target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. Or counter target artifact or enchantment spell, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature, and or target player shuffles up to three cards from their graveyard into their library. What do you think, Wheeler? Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. That's the that's the blue green tempo juice I need. It's like I'll take an unsummon. I'll take a planeswalker unsummon. I'll take countering the paradox engines and the the courser of crew fixes. I'm very excited to just put two counters on my creatures as well. Big fan of that. It's kind of like the the spell has a bunch of sneaky ways of also dealing with instants and sorceries or protecting your own things. Like putting two counters can, you know, help brick lightning bolt style of effects or destroy something with power X or less, you know, that kind of thing. Even just unsummoning your own Vendillion clique or brazen borrower to hit different permanents or, or muck their hand is pretty neat. And then just like being able to shuffle away a reanimator targets. I think it'd be really funny to hit somebody's graveyard with this card. If they're trying to like fast as Oracle combo, kill you. Oh no. That's kind of neat. <laughs> Yeah, big fan of these cards. Modal cards, it's cheap, it's in the right colors. Big fan. All right. Well, what about the Quandrix Pledge Mage then? This is a three mana 2-2 two, two Merfolk Druid for one 
and a Quandrix and a Quandrix, I guess. Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, put a plus one plus one counter on the Pledge Mage. Wheeler. Not to speak for Jer on the Druid matter, but I don't think this card makes it in uh, Druids. And uh, I can't foresee playing this card in Merfolk, but that's okay because it's a three mana creature that gets bigger when I take game actions. So I'm going to play this in blue green. It's it's not as like free as say this this is gonna sound like a dated comment. It's not as free as say a lore scale codal or like a vine lasher <laughs> kudzu because they're game actions like this you have to cast the spells, but also in a deck that goes as deep as like mental note and thought scour, I think that's okay. I will I will play this card. Next up we have Rip Apart. This is a two mana sorcery for red and a white. Choose one. Deal three damage to target creature or planeswalker, or destroy target artifact or enchantment. Wheeler. It's really nice that they gave lore hold an additional command. If you didn't want to play the five mana one, you could play this one. The two mana command with four options. Either doming a creature, doming a planeswalker, blowing an artifact, blowing an enchantment. Sorcery speed is okay, right? You know, sometimes casting stuff on your main phase, it's pretty cool and good. Give it a shot. Even instance. You can cast instance on your main phase. This card's great. Kills a lot of things and it's super reasonable. Please play it. I was low on this card because I, I couldn't imagine a situation where I wouldn't rather just play a braid. Well, you can play both. Yeah, I, cer I think I certainly mm. play both. It's just the flexibility is sure. just so overwhelming. Yeah, like you yeah, could yeah. literally just do everything. Even if this is just chipping off a planeswalker to push through some damage from other creatures. Like look, Oko's a magic card that exists for some <laughs> reason. Yeah. And, and getting rid of six loyalty is not the easiest. But just that little extra push damage is, is very welcome. I don't know. Fair enough. All right. Rushed Rebirth is a two mana instant for a black and a green. Choose target creature. When now, now notably... Not you control. Choose target creature, period. When that creature dies this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser mana value, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. What do you think, Wheeler? I, I really like this card. You can find it off Spellseeker. That's kind of cool. It's, I mean, it is a little, like, it doesn't do anything by itself, which is worth noting, right? Like, you need to have certain qualifications met, and this is... You can get it reactively where they kill your thing and then you use this. But like I, I, I look at this and I'm really excited to, you know, try and kill somebody in a combo oriented fashion with this card, which requires you to kind of just say, hey, I'm going to rush rebirth, target this creature and then sack it to my carry and feeder. But that aside, the flexibility that comes with it being able to, again, just target their creature for some reason. Who knows? <laughs> but that that's pretty nice and uh, i look forward to giving this card a shot are we are we picturing this in the same sort of decks that are playing like what's that evolution card again or neoform yeah neoform or eldritch evolution because like this is this doesn't go up the pod chain which, yeah. which is pretty relevant right yeah yeah that's that's absolutely a factor there, there's just more hoops to jump through for this one than than either of those cards Th those cards do a very specific thing and they always do that thing Whereas this card, you need to have a creature die, and that's not included in the card. Like so, yeah, the, it's certainly not as ubiquitous as those cards, where you just have to have a creature and then another creature. And usually, decks that play those are like okay, but they're, <laughs> I, I believe, given the pre-existing archetypes that want this or that would not mind this kind of card and that can combo going down, is uh, makes me excited to give it a shot. I also think you could play this card in Aristocrats. Oh, ah, yeah, fair enough. It's like very good at putting Blood Artist into play, which is the thing that deck oh. wants to do. Oh, yeah, good call. Garrison Camp, Carrion Feeder. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we have Shadrick Silver Quill. It's a legendary 5-mana 2-5 Elder Dragon for 3, a white, and a black. Has flying and double strike. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may choose two, but each mode must target a different player. So target player creates a 2-1 white black inkling creature token with flying. Target player draws a card and loses a life. And target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. So if you, and this is, this is not mandatory, if you decide to do this, you get one and your opponent gets the other. What do you think, Jer? I just don't think this card is, is that exciting to me. It's like five mana for a dragon that doesn't have haste. It's not red, so it's not really like that expected. But, and then... The first turn you play it, like the only time I think it's okay is if you're playing against 
somebody who has no creatures that matter and you can just give them counters on their no creatures and then you can either draw a card or make a make a flyer whichever is better but i think the fact that you have to give one of these to your opponent otherwise you just have a a doofy two five flying double strike for five mana yeah i I just don't don't see the appeal of this card personally all right let's try out silver quill command instead then so four mana sorcery not an instant like the other ones costs two a white and a black choose two target creature gains plus three plus three and gains flying until end of turn return target creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield target player draws one and loses one target opponent sacks a creature what do you think this card's quite good and this is one of the better commands in that i could see all four modes being used useful quite a high high percentage of the time the big downside is that it's a sorcery but with the templating of the abilities that that makes a fair amount of sense they don't usually like giving you you creatures at instant speed with these things <laughs> instant speed reanimator oof uh. <laughs> but there are a ton of high value two mana creatures in both white and black that could play this card plus three plus three and flying pushes a ton of damage especially with the access to double strikers that decks like these often play drawing a card is a great mode to have that's always good and target opponent sacks a creature is just a nice line of text my guess is the first mode and the fourth mode will be the the least useful but when they're useful they're going to be very good but i i i really do think i mean i agree with you i think this card is great it's good i was shocked not shocked necessarily but it like Plus three, plus three is a lot. Yeah, that's a big pump spell. For not a green card? I've seen people like kind of be underwhelmed by this card, but this card just kills people dead. Uh, maybe people haven't played with Elspeth in a long time. Like her ability to give a creature plus three, plus three and fly and used to just end games fast. Yeah, even even just like reanimating a two drop and drawing a card and losing a life felt good <laughs> like when i in in this admittedly in a small sample size but like playing this and getting back dare i say dread horde arcanist or getting back like a spirit of the labyrinth or whatever Ooh, you can get back at wait no that doesn't work very well for you if you target yourself with the draw but like <laughs> yeah get back a young pyromancer draw a card great get back a bob or bob variant yeah, yeah. Uh, i like this card well, in the in the spirit of Silver Quill, let's check out the Silver Quill Silencer. It's a two mana three two human cleric for a white and a black. As it enters the battlefield, choose a non land card name. Whenever opponent casts a spell with a chosen name, they lose three life, and you draw a card. Wheeler. It's a human. That's pretty important. It's got three power. That's pretty important. Like it's uh, meddling mage is a weird card in our format in that it I could probably count on both my hands the number of times that card has appeared in tournament winning decks or in decks that have you know put up consistent good numbers over the past 10 years but this at least attacks for three like the floor of this is that it's just a it's just donkey that smashes and is easy to cast you're not easy to cast but easy ish to cast in a two color or a three color deck and like you are probably playing it alongside other cards that will give you a bit of a peek you know hand attack spells like inquisition or like thoughtsies into this on turn two naming like their paradise druid or their you know rampant growth kind of card like that's three life is a lot of life yeah and drawing a card so if this triggers congratulations that's an absurd amount of value and if it doesn't well you're probably getting punched by this card so <laughs> really good card big fan all right next up we have tanazir quandrix this is a 5 mana 4-4 four, four Legendary Elder Dragon for 3, a green and a blue. Has Flying and Trample. When it enters the battlefield, double the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature you control. And whenever it attacks, you may have the base power and toughness of other creatures you control become equal to 10 as your Quadrix power and toughness until end of turn. What do you think, Wheeler? I'm good. It's 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 a I love a big dragon. I love counters, but it's no verderous gear hulk surge few are yeah colony and hydra oh yeah it's like it's no colony a sandwich it's uh colony and hydra for those not familiar it's a five mana zero zero in green that enters with four counters and whenever it attacks you double the amount or it has trample sorry and whenever it attacks you double the number of one one counters on each creature you control so that kills people dead like if this card gets to attack 
they're they're dead. Everything doubles. It's absurd. And so I'm just struggling to think. And like that card is kind of clunky by design, right? So I'm just struggling to find a world where I would want to play a card like this as opposed to uh, just playing one of Gear Hulk or Hydra or any number of top end cards that the counter stacks has access to. I guess you can Caracas it. That's kind of neat. You could just Caracas it over and over. I'd rather just play Gold Span Dragon. <laughs> Uh, fair, fair. All right, next up, Teach by Example. This is a two-mana instant for Prismari Hybrid, Prismari Hybrid. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell, and you may choose new targets for it. Jair. This is, I really like this templating. I'm still not sure how many decks want want this effect. I've tried playing them in the, the Time Walks deck, and I think more often than not, You'd rather just play play more time walks than try to do a build your own time stretch adventure. I think playing this with Ancestral is a little too cute. Like goes back to the classic. You don't need to play bad cards to make your amazing cards amazinger. Yeah, I I, I, I like this templating, but I just don't think there's a a deck that needs this this type of effect really. All right, next up, Thrilling Discovery is a two mana sorcery for red and white. Gain two, then you may discard two cards. If you do, draw three cards. What do you think, Wheeler? <laughs> it's like, what if we gave you Cathartic Reunion and you just get to gain the life? That's just a little treat. That's like a mint you get before the dinner. And then if you want to, I guess theoretically, you could discard two cards and draw three cards. White in dredge decks is not super prevalent but it's also not totally out there like there are a lot of like the diehard dredge players active in the online community love themselves a renegade rally or a savine's reclamation making luris a little bit easier to cast like it's a thing that gets done so whether or not they want to double up on a card like this cool good great but I don't know. I like I I would be interested to try this out in like a blitz deck too, like just sky blitz or like just boros like prowess sort of thing because not being an additional cost is is huge and that's a lot of cards to draw. But it's also just this card's kind of weird. It's really weird. Do you just gain the life gains just there so that they don't make it an additional cost, right? You I know? guess. I don't know. It, it's it's expensive. Like having to have two cards in hand that you want to pitch two for three mm -hmm. is also tough. Like that's a big rummage. Yeah. You have but... to have a lot of lands in hand and hope to have a very aggressive deck to make this good or be doing some type of graveyard shenanigans. Yeah. Like I, I think this card probably slots into like the Goblin Welder stuff style deck like if we're on a red white goblin welder sure deck. you're happy to pitch if your draws are bad you're happy to pitch if your draws are good <laughs> yeah. i don't know how deep we go down that hole but we're certainly on faithless looting and i could foresee us on thrilling discovery you can play it in the mizzix's mastery deck like bin, Ooh, bin yeah. some large spells yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. draw three freshies okay all right all right i'm warming up on this card i was kind of meh on it and now i'm like meh Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, Vanishing Verse is a two mana instant for a white and a black and reads exile target monocolored permanent. What do you think, Chair? I think this card is good enough. We've had cards like this before, like Ultimate Price, which have seen some play and are, are rarely rarely blanked the fact that this hits any permanent and not just creatures is really nice although some of the most busted planeswalkers are multicolored you'll be sad to have this as your removal spell lining up against those but i think that's sort of just a a costly play of trying to be be more efficient rather than playing the more expensive slower more versatile options available so the decks that want to be really efficient with their mana cost have to have to sacrifice with the the versatility and this is a reasonable option that's that's available now. I think that was a fantastic analysis. In particular, I enjoyed the conversation, the balance of efficiency versus efficacy. That's, God, we could do an entire episode on that. That's, ah, Jerry, you're so smart. All right. Get to the big dragon. I want to talk about the big dragon. And after and after that, dragon. Dragon time. Velomachus Lorehold is a seven mana, five, five legendary elder dragon for five, a red and a white has flying haste and vigilance and when it attacks look at the top seven cards of your library you may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value less than or equal to its power from amongst them without paying its mana cost put the rest on the bottom in a random order what do you think wheeler dragon go burr do you hear that do you hear that 
I don't know. I'm going to cast some time warps with this card. It's like, I, this is a God forbid somebody hard casts this, Aww. but I mean, you could technically cast scape shift off it. Wait, hold on. It's got haste. It's a giant legendary dragon and it can cast your broken magic cards for free. Most of the time. Thank God it hits seven cards. That's a lot of cards. You know, people probably look at this and they're familiar with Narset, the from Konza Tarkir. Yeah, Narset can hit anything, though, but only flips four cards. And she gets all of them. You don't have to pick. You just get them. Right, them right, 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 right. Uh, a couple of commander players, I see. Uh, anyways. Yo, I tried to make I tried to make Narset cheat spells as a deck in Highlander. And when it hits, it feels great. And when it dies to shock, you feel like an absolute melon. It has hexproof. Oh, it has hexproof. I forgot that part. I've played against that nurse, and I believe it may have been Jer playing it. It, it absolutely was me. <laughs> <laughs> but in hitting all the spells is cool, but also you only really need to hit one time warp, right? Like time warp's a good magic card, and there's a couple of them. Admittedly, there are not as many five drop time warps as you'd like. This is, yeah. If you're playing this, you're definitely on like savor the moment, though. Sorry, what's savor the moment? <laughs> It's a time warp, but you skip your untap step, which is okay because Velimachus has uh, vigilance. vigilance. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I play yeah. this with Stitch oh in time. Oh my god! Flip some coins. Uh, yeah, like I'm gonna play this in a combo deck. It's not going to be like my starting card. Like I don't go. Okay, well we have to have Velimachus. I guess I could play Gristlebrand. Yeah. <laughs> How does Dragon get into play? Shallow Grave, Gorios Vengeance. It already has haste. I can exhume this bad boy. Animate dead. All right. All right. All right. You're never you're never paying retail. Don't don't thing. dance to the dead though. That's gonna feel bad. Oh mm. god. It narrows all your hits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Show and tell. Don't do that. Maybe do that. Ah, maybe do ah, that. Don't do that. Nah, don't do that. Like even if you just hit a tutor and find force of will, right? Like if we play if you play this in that time warp deck and you hit like any kind of tutor or larger draw spell or yeah, any kind of tutor or larger draw spell and you put force of will, force of negation or pact of negation into your hand. Uh, that's pretty good. Do you think it's good enough in regular reanimator? It probably is. I right? think so. I think so. Like honestly, if this card was like seven mana, five, five haste, vigilance flyer when it attacks duress, I would be like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> like I'd give that a <laughs> short or like worst case, it's probably hitting a cantrip, right? Oh yeah. It's strategic yeah. planning. Mm. Oh, <laughs> love right. to see it. Pretty good. Like, I mean, jokes aside, it is worth mentioning that if it hits the less, like the not really exciting cards, that also just sets you up to reanimate again if they deal with this card and if they don't deal with this card well then they're dead <laughs> yeah it's still a 5-5 five, five dragon at the yeah. end of the day right yeah all right next up we have venerable war singer this is a three mana three three spirit cleric for one of red and a white has vigilance and trample and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may return target creature card with a mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of damage it dealt to that player. I love this card. This card is amazing. This is exactly what the red-white aggressive decks have needed for a, a very long time, is just four good cards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is definitely proof that complaining on Twitter does something. I don't complain on Twitter about Boros. No, not you. I'm oh. not saying, Serge, I don't want to paint you as the How kind of person How dare you know about my I, Boros Needs Better Creatures Twitter oh, campaign. classic Serge on Twitter, adding Mark Rosewater and yeah. complaining about Boros. But like, <laughs> you know, between Winota, this card, J Jorkadim. What, what is it? What, Hoffrey? Hoffrey, yeah. Yeah, between all those cards, like, holy smokes. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This deck is actually kind of real. And for a very long time, why play Boros, right? Red is faster and more burny. White probably gets you better creature quality. Why play both together? It, it's one of those combinations mm. that for a long time made sense until you actually made it and realized you'd be better off doing one of two other decks. We, we've come a long way from your answer to why play Boros is, well, Plateau was the cheapest duel. <laughs> Like it went from Plateau's the oh, cheapest no. duel to, well, I I own a Swords of the Plowshares and a Lightning Bolt, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. don't have a Force of Will. Yeah, this card is obviously very strong. This card is obviously, obviously very strong. And for the longest time, the reason to not play it would have been because the colors weren't good enough. 
And I think, honestly, Boros, aggro by itself, Boros, hate bears is now viable. Boros, give this a sword and bring back your creatures for redundancy. That's the particular flavor that I love. Boros equipment and Boros vehicles. Beep, beep, let's go. I'm just going to hit someone with this ingest guy and return the Geist to St. Traft or True Name Nemesis that I <laughs> counter, that got countered or that I discarded. Like, this is... How dare you play this in Jess Guy? This belongs oh, in just good old fashion. <laughs> Get it out of your good decks. This is making my bad decks better. Uh, sorry, sir. Returning like any of the recruiters? My God. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. Next up, we have Witherbloom Apprentice is a two mana two two human druid for a black and a green magecraft. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell or copy it, your opponents lose a life and you gain a life. Wheeler. It also combos with Chain of Smog. It's another one of the Chain of Smog cards. Getting that out of the gates now so the comments don't pop off. But like when you think of the creatures you would play in Storm, right? Like this isn't the axis of helping you kill someone that you need. Like Baral, great. Goblin Apprentice. Uh, Goblin Apprentice. Electromancer. Electromancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also great. Witherbloom Apprentice. Like, ah, finally, my... All the spells leading up to my tendrils of agony. I, I'm going to drain you out, but not my lotus petals or anything. And like, I guess you could play this in like a black green or like a soul tie. Like I'm going to, Chris Sutherland's going to kill me with this card is the way I'm looking <laughs> at it. Like I'm going to die to someone playing this card in a deck where they're also just playing like opt or like serum visions, thought scour, cheap cantrips. You think this really? Well, I don't, I, I don't think it's, I don't think that, the combination of those cards is good, but it will happen. I mean, if this thing deals three damage and also attacks, I mean, what about in uh, Abzan Life Gain? I don't think that deck's playing enough instants or sorceries necessarily. Sure. It's mostly getting off of creature ETBs and yeah. stuff. Like hitting. All right. Maybe you could play this in like a Jund Pyromancer deck if you really want to. But again, it it's just not, that's not the effect you're looking for. You know, I just don't think it does enough. I think the merit of it, being a two drop and f searchable off of what you call it, uh, transmute cards mm. it can maybe push it into like a, a black green storm list or a black like the big black deck but it splashes green for veil of summer in this card or whatever so yeah all right and the final card that we are going to talk about today is the witherbloom command this is a two mana sorcery for a black and a green. Choose two of four. Target player mills three. Then you return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. Destroy target non-creature, non-land permanent with a mana value two or less. Target creature gets minus three, minus one until end of turn. And or target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. JR, take us home. This is a weird one. It's, it's pretty niche and it doesn't really have that like those two modes where you're you're sort of happy to to play it all the time i guess it's the closest is mode one and mode three which is the mill three get a land and target creature gets minus three minus one but this one i think is a little too niche like i i just don't think you're gonna have hits often enough that you're gonna want to use a slot in your deck to to put this in like the drain two is only good if you're killing them the destroy target non-creature non-land permanent with mana value two or less is super super niche like it kills ren and six gta and after that i'm struggling to think of things you like really want to kill with this A sylvan library but no i get your point yeah like there's just not that many and even if you're like haha my opponent has ren and six gta and sylvan library in their deck like there's a reasonable chance they just won't draw any of them that game so yeah i i, I think this card is a little a little too narrow personally so that's gonna do it for our set review today now let's take a second and what do you think of the set overall? We've talked about this a little bit in other ones. I don't think this is as oppressively powerful as, you know, some of the ones we've seen before, but I think it's really cool and really flavorful. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree. I think there's a lot of interesting cards, and this is the type of design I, I prefer where they're trying a bunch of new things as opposed to just like trying to push the boundaries in terms of in terms of power level. They're pushing it in terms of new designs, which which is the direction I like to see them going. There are definitely some cards that are good to see a bunch of play in our format as well, which is which is cool. Yeah, I think this is a good set. 
I've got three things that I'm really excited about in this set. Boros cards. Actual, just good Boros cards. I think is really cool. It's been missing for a while. Two, and maybe actually point two and point three are the same thing. I was going to say Warlocks and Vampires. I, I do like seeing good cards being added to tribes. I like when a tribe that wasn't that hasn't been viable that that word's obviously pretty loaded when we talk about our format but just like new tribes getting new good cards and maybe making them competitive is always very cool and very exciting to me two and three of the same point i guess i had two points wheeler the only this sounds way more pessimistic than i want it to be but i usually grade new sets off of like the number of grown cards like the cards that i groan at while looking at <laughs> and like the only card that really hits that mark is the uh, solve the equation the blue tutor for instance and sorceries it's the only card i look at and go like mm. why did we need this like why is this here and even then like it's not as we're not talking opposition agents or what whatever. about lelia no i like that because i i enjoy the decks that play that <laughs> no oh, but, so that, uh, you can groan at solve the equation all groan at lelia so that's yeah that's that's a two on the groan but i'll also play solve the equation I'll play it and then complain about it so my opponent feels less bad when I solve the equation for my Behold the Beyond. I'm happy for Lelia. I don't play a lot of decks that win. And suddenly, <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly getting cards that go in my bad decks and make them better. I'm like, choo-choo, let's go. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's my actual, like, I, I love new archetypes popping up, getting some reinforcement, especially when they are ones that have, like, pre-existing community members that love them like maybe it's a little narrow to just like think it through uh decks that people at yj have tried that you know in the past have tried to push or decks that online people have you know made their pet decks but to see them get the tools to actually exist and thrive when the groundwork has already been done means that it's super easy for someone to go like oh there's a lot of life gain cards like can we do anything and then somebody just uh, pops and goes like hey yeah so i've been playing an abzan life gain deck for like uh, the past three years hold my drink <laughs> finally <laughs> yeah it just helps kind of break down at least one of the barriers for either getting into the format or mm. getting like finding something new in the format which yeah i'm all for that this this set looks really cool uh looks powerful but not oppressive and they printed Sedgemore Witch, so hey, the next set could be another <laughs> Eldraine for all I care. Let's, let's go easy. easy. Yeah, well, next set is uh, Forgotten Realms or Modern Horizons. Yeah, Modern Horizons 2. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, dear. So we found Renin 6 was too good, so we've decided to reprint it, but it's a new card entirely, and instead it's blue-green instead, <laughs> blue, instead of red-green. We've color-shifted it. <laughs> yeah, a color shifted ran six we made lightning bolt two. Uh, oh man all right everybody i really hope you enjoyed listening to our set review thank you so much again please let us know in the comments down below if there's any cards that you're excited about any cards you thought we missed reminder this podcast is brought to you by you the support of the patreon over at patreon.com slash loading ready run thank you so much for listening i've been surge joined by jer and wheeler we'll see you next time and bye-bye